given a is related to b when a b is greater than 0 over z so z is a set of all integers both positive and negative integers so write the properties of the relation r we'll check from uh, reflexive for all integers we know that xx is greater than 0 x could be positive or negative if both are negative then product is positive so greater than 0 then if both are positive then also the product is greater than 0 therefore r is reflexive second one if xy belongs to r implies x into y greater than 0 then y into x is also greater than 0 which implies yx belongs to r therefore r is symmetric but if you see 3 0 and 0 minus 7 belongs to r because 3 into 0 is 0 which is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 into minus 7 is 0 which is greater than or equal to 0 but 3 comma minus 7 which is uh, minus that is 3 into minus 7 is minus 25 21 which is less than 0 so it does not belongs to r therefore r is not transitive according to transitivity when 3 0 and 0 7 0 minus 7 belongs to r 3 minus 7 belongs to r but here 3 minus 7 does not belongs to r because the product is less than 0 therefore r is not transitive next if xy belongs to r and yx belongs to r it does not imply x is equal to y therefore r is not anti-symmetric example if you see 3 0 belongs to r and 0 3 belongs to r but R, uh, but it does not imply 3 equal to 0 because 3 is not equal to 0. Therefore, R is not anti-symmetric. This is how you have to verify the properties on the relation given the relation in this fashion. So, likewise, some other examples. If you see, let U be a set. R is a relation on power set of U defined by AB belongs to R. If A is a subset proper subset of B. A is a subset of B for A, B belongs to you. Write the properties of the relation. So, for you um, reflexive, every set is a subset of itself. Therefore, R is reflexive. Next, for A, B belongs to R implies A is a subset of B, but B is not a subset of A. Therefore, B, A does not belong to R. Therefore, R is not symmetric. Next is, if A, B belongs to R, implies A is a subset of B and if BC belongs to R, if B is a subset of C, implies B is a, A is a subset of C. With this uh, BC is a sub belongs to R, implies B is a subset of C. If these two are satisfied, then A is a subset of C. Therefore, AC belongs to R. Therefore, R is transitive. Next is if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, then it is obvious that A is equal to B. Therefore, R is anti-symmetric. One more problem. R is a relation on Z plus defined by A is related to B if A exactly divides B. Write the properties of R. Now, we have to make use of the general definition of divisibility. So, first for reflexive, for all positive integers, we have a exactly divides B, that is A divides A. So, A comma A belongs to R, therefore R is reflexive. Next, if AB belongs to R implies A divides B. When A divides B, it is not that B divides A, which implies BA does not belong to R. Example, if you see 1 divides 2, whereas 2 does not divide 1. Therefore, R is not symmetric. Next is, if AB belongs to R implies A divides B. And BC belongs to R implies B divides C, then A divides C. So, when A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C, therefore R is transitive. Next is, if AB belongs to R implies A divides B and BA belongs to R implies B divides A. When A divides B and B divides A, it is obvious that A is equal to B. Therefore, R is anti-symmetric. Likewise, other properties you can check on different problems. Some more examples. Determine whether the relation R on set of all real numbers is reflexive, symmetric, anti-symmetric and or transitive where xy belongs to r if and only if 
x plus y equal to 0 that is the first problem then x is equal to plus or minus y then third one x minus y is a rational number and fourth one x equal to 2y x y greater than or equal to 0 x y equal to 0 x equal to 1 x equal to 1 or y equal to 1 <clears throat> so for the first one x plus y equal to 0. So that is the first one is if x plus y equal to 0 then y plus x is also 0. So it is symmetric. Next x equals to plus or minus y. So here it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So why it is reflexive? x is equal to plus or minus x. That is true. And if x is equal to plus or minus y, then y is equal to plus or minus x. So, it is symmetric. Next is uh, if x is equal to plus or minus y and y is equal to plus or minus z, it implies x is equal to plus or minus z. Therefore, it is transitive. So, likewise, you can check for the remaining problems. So, likewise, again, few more problems, you can solve it. So, now if the relation is given in the form of this form, how do we verify? So, for first one, you have to verify for symmetric. So, symmetric indicates that if x, y is there, y, x should also be belongs to the relation. So, 2, 2 is there. So, 2, 2 is the already there. Then 2, 3. Then 3, 2 must be there. It is there. 2, 4. 4, 2 is not there. So, it is not symmetric whether it is anti-symmetric. So, anti-symmetric property says that if 2, 3 is there and 3, 2 is there, then 2 must be equal to 3. So, here 2, 2 is there and 2, 2 is there. So, it is equal. So, 2, 3 is there, 3, 2 is not. 3, 2 is also there, but 2 is not equal to 3. Therefore, it is not anti-symmetric. Then for transitivity, so 2, 2 and 2, 3. So, 2, 3 must be there. 2, 2 and 2, 4. So, 2, 4 must be there. So, it is there. Then 2, 3 and 3, 2. So, 2, 2 must be there. So, 2, it is there. 2, 2 and 3, 3. So, 2, 3 is there. So, it is there. 2, 4 and uh, there is no order pair which starts with 4. So, it is there. That is okay. Then 3, 2 and 2, 2. So, 2, 2 must, 3, 2 must be there. It is there. 3, 2 and 2, 3. So, 3, 3 is there. 3, 2 and 2, 4. So, 3, 4 is there. So, it is okay. Then, uh, likewise, for the 3, 3 and 3, 4 also, if you verify, it satisfies the transitive property. So, likewise, for other relations, you can verify and the answer is also given here. Next, counting on the relations. How many different reflexive relations can be defined on a set A containing N elements. So, R is a reflexive relation on set A. So, you can have N square elements in A cross A. Therefore, different relations on A can be generated by choosing different subsets out of these N square elements. So, the number of subsets from N square elements is 2 to the power of N square. Therefore, you can have 2 to the power of N square relations. Next, a reflexive relation must contain n elements, a comma a, for every a belongs to a. So, therefore, we can only choose among n square minus n, which is n into n minus 1 elements to generate the reflexive relations. So, there are 2 to the power of n into n minus 1 of them, which are reflexive relations. So, because all the diagonal elements are 1 and among the remaining that is 2 power n square minus n. So, you can have 2 choices. So, you have 2 to the power of n square minus n reflexive relations. So, it is a summary. Let A be a set on which the relation is defined such that length of uh, A that is set size is n. Then the number of relations is 2 power n square. Number of reflexive relations is 2 power n square minus n. Because all the diagonals are 1 which has 2 power 1 which is 1 power 1. Because you have only 1 as a main diagonal element. So you have the remaining uh, n square minus n elements uh, 
will be either present or absent. That is, you have two options. So, it is 2 power n square minus n. Then, now similarly, number of irreflexive relations is also equal to 2 power n square minus n. And number of relations that are neither reflexive nor irreflexive. So, it is given by 2 power n, n minus 1 into 2 power n square minus n. Likewise, the number of symmetric relations is 2 to the power of n square plus n divided by 2. Number of asymmetric relations is 3 to the power of n square minus n by 2. Number of anti-symmetric relations is 2 power n into 3 to the power of n square minus n divided by 2. Number of relations which are both symmetric and asymmetric you can have is only 1. And the number of relations which are both reflexive and anti-symmetric is 3 to the power of n square minus n divided by 2. Thank you.